Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends. Uh, first, I would like to say that it is an honor to uh, be allowed to speak once again in the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, with, where I had the honor already to be a speaker in uh, various uh, conferences and, and book presentations. Um, the second uh, introductory remark I would like to make is that um, I myself uh, dedicated um, quite big book about Central Europe, which uh, you can read in Hungarian, Europa, uh, which was published uh, by Akademie Kiado in 2011. And uh, in reading uh, the book by uh, Professor Busek and Briggs, I was um, wondering about my own uh, approach, about my own uh, appreciation and uh, my own views about what is uh, Mittal Europa and uh, what it was, because I'm an historian, and what it should uh, be or it should become again uh, following the various proposals that the uh, book, the present book, um, has. So I was uh, really interesting in. Uh, reflecting about uh, these various questions uh, in, uh, in the book. And I also uh, had the curiosity to go back to one of the books that uh, both authors uh, wrote uh, some uh, years ago, uh, which was called Projekt Mittel Europa. And I was wondering about uh, what was uh, the um, long way we did from this one first book until until the one which is actually uh, presented here and um, reflecting on both books i uh, figure out that there are some uh, progresses on one side but some uh, uh, drawbacks on the on the other side and this is also what is uh, what the present book is about is uh, what what went wrong or what didn't go so well and why we should now uh, concentrate on uh, trying to uh, make it better or to propose uh, new uh, ideas for uh, Mittel Europa. And since I'm an historian, I, uh, I would like to uh, make a few comments on, of course, on the points in the book which interested me uh, the most because of my uh, historical uh, upbringing. Um, and uh, in, many, in many parts in the book, uh, the historians are uh, addressed. Um, at one point, it is also considered that uh, historians did quite a lot to, uh, uh, bridge, to, to bridge the gaps between uh, the former uh, countries uh, of the, of the uh, Soviet bloc uh, with uh, the help of books, of course, uh, historical commissions. And at uh, one moment, it is even said that uh, we need more historical commissions to uh, work on the various problems of uh, Central Europe, like uh, bridging the gap between borders, between uh, national narratives, between national discourses. And sometimes, uh, of course, speaking also here from here from Hungary, we have the impression that uh, we work a lot on these questions, on these topics. I mean, we, the, 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 uh, communi the community of historians from here, from uh, other parts of Europe, and our knowledge, our books, our writings, uh, and our dialogues don't go much deeper into the, op the public opinion. And we have, uh, uh, we, um, we see, of course, a difference between uh, what is actually going on at the academic level and how not satisfactory is the knowledge of the common citizen in the various countries uh, of, uh, of the region. So one of the uh, uh, proposals which is made in the, in the book, uh, which already exists for uh, southeastern Europe and for, for uh, Greece and Turkey, for example, would be to have more handbooks, more uh, uh, books for, for uh, pupils, for uh, children, for schools, that actually uh, encompass all the region 
but not imposing the national narratives that are systematically uh, written in the in the in the school in the school books. So this is of course uh, a, a wonderful idea. It has already, as I said, uh, been done for some parts of uh, southeastern Europe on some topics, like the Balkan Wars, for example. I mean the Balkan Wars, 1912, 1930, um, and. Probably this would be one of the great uh, challenges we could uh, we could uh, uh, think of uh, in, uh, in in the region. We have some some French and German uh, handbooks. We have uh, Polish, German handbooks, and so on and so on. But probably we should need more uh, regional uh, books about uh, all the former countries of the Habsburg uh, monarchy, because this is what it is about, actually. The region is more or less, with some, of course, differences, uh, the former uh, Habsburg uh, empire. This is why another topic uh, of the book is extremely uh, stimulating and, and uh, constantly uh, challenging uh, historians. It is the uh, the dichotomy with center and periphery. So uh, if you look at the Habsburg Empire, of course there were some peripheries that were addressed as such at this time. Of course, for, for a Viennese, uh, Bukovina was a periphery. But inside of these regions, of these provinces, of these Kornländer, there were so many centers. So you could have one regional center and then, of course, another more remote center, which could be, which could be Vienna. So the periphery is never a real periphery. And it is, uh, the question is, from where do you speak? From which point, from which part of the region are you addressing these kind of topics like center and periphery? And this has not changed. We can also uh, um, uh, address uh, the topic uh, today. And one of the uh, uh, points in the book is that Western Europe, uh, EU in, 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 uh, in general terms, that Western Europe should stop to think of Central and Eastern Europe as a periphery. Because as, uh, as long as it is conceived as such, uh, we cannot bridge all these gaps I was uh, um, uh, mentioning at the beginning of, of my talk. And uh, one of the ways for uh, stopping to peripherize or to marginalize uh, Central and Eastern Europe would be to think uh, in other terms, in other geographic terms. And um, I'm an historian, but as I, as, as I am a French, I was uh, brought up with geography. In France, it's uh, compulsory. You cannot study history without studying geography. So we are obliged to swallow quite a lot of geography when we study uh, in France. And uh, I never forget this uh, geographical uh, uh, thinking. And one of the interesting points in the book is also to uh, put again the Mediterranean in the mental map of uh, Central and Eastern Europe. And I would go actually uh, one step further because there is one part of the Mediterranean, which is not addressed in the book, but which is the, the sea of the region, it's the Adriatic. And this is absolutely crucial for us if we conceive, again, if we, if we conceive the region taking into account the former Habsburg monarchy, the sea, the, 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 the access to the sea was through the Adriatic, where, of course, the, the three empires had had the uh, habit to, to uh, coexist. Venice, Ottoman Empire, Habsburg Empire. And if, I think if we um, um, look in these questions with the very famous uh, concept of the French historiography of long durée, of long term, of course, we cannot miss that. And we have to put again, not only the Mediterranean, but of course, the Adriatic back into uh, the concepts we are developing about uh, the region. <clears throat> 
So uh, now I would like to, to say a few words about the proposals that are uh, contained in the book. I already mentioned the one on uh, having handbooks uh, for uh, schools, but um, there is quite a lot of uh, um, uh, pages dedicated to, to the regional aspect and not only to the regional cooperation, of course, this is something which is here uh, in Hungary very well known, you know, of all these regional uh, projects and, of course, of Visegrad uh, uh, group. But uh, one of the regrets that is uh, uh, mentioned in the book is that it's a pity that the, the, the Visegrad group was not uh, enlarged uh, to uh, encompass uh, Austria. And, uh, of course, uh, since the book is uh, by Austrian authors, there, is, uh, uh, many, there are many, many um, uh, points uh, dedicated to what is Austria's mission in, uh, in the region and what should Austria do or do better in order to uh, 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 help the region to be more central and less a periphery, as I said a few uh, minutes ago. So one of the ideas, and it, it of course uh, bridges with, with uh, what I told about the handbooks, is to have um, a region where the neighbors are more integrated. And I think that one of the points with which we could help uh, bringing the neighbors more together would be to encourage the learning of the neighbor's language. That is, not that everyone learns English, which is absolutely uh, compulsory, of, of course, but that we here in Hungary, people learn Slovak, people learn Croatian, and not only, of course, the people who live at the border and, and who, who uh, are uh, uh, Grenzgänger, as we say in German, so border crossing all the time. So that this kind of uh, uh, teaching could be offered next to English, of course, which nobody can avoid uh, today, but that, uh, and of course also German, uh, naturally, but that the, the languages of the neighbors be more uh, uh, taught in the, in the schools. And uh, we were talking also uh, about Erasmus uh, programs, and we see that uh, the most uh, Erasmus students from here go west and don't go uh, to Zagreb or, uh, well, maybe to Prague somehow to drink beer. But uh, anyway, they should be more encouraged to visit the, uh, the neighbors. I will just uh, close with one anecdote. In 2004, I had the honor to be a guest professor at the University of Vienna, and I had a course on uh, multicultural cities of the Habsburg uh, Empire from 1880 to the First World War. And in my class, which was 25 pupils, all Austrians, in my class, nobody, I say nobody, had visited Pozsony, Bratislava, Pressburg, or Laibach, Ljubljana. This seems incredible for young Austrians, you know because as you, as you know, Bratislava is just next door. Nobody in my class had visited these cities. And I urged them to do that. So I gave them uh, a referat uh, to do and say, now you go there and you, and you, work, and you work a little bit on that, uh, on that city. So I think probably since 2004, uh, a lot has been done, and I hope that these uh, travels are more frequent uh, nowadays. I know, I know they are, but uh, uh, this is one of the proposals uh, contained in, the, in this very, very interesting and stimulating uh, book that I think we should uh, follow. Thank you. <laughs>